Hey there, YouTube. Today I'm going to make a fish clock. It's going to look a little bit like this. Actually, it's going to look just like that because that's the fish I just made, but now I'm starting. So it's like one of those movies two days ago. Okay, here we are two days ago, and I am making this fish. So what I have done is I've taken my pallet wood, cut the pallet, pallet wood off the 2x4s, and I have these pieces now. So all the pieces are about the same thickness. They still have the nails in them, which have been cut off. Here's my pattern. Cut it out of brown paper. So I'm just going to line these up. And one of the things I found with pallet wood is sometimes you have to trim the edges so that they fit together um, well. Some of them are crooked. They have gotten crooked as they sat in the pallet. So I'm going to run these through my table saw to just even up the edges a little bit and then I'll put it back together. Okay, now I'm going to lay these out and I'm going to trace the fish onto these pieces of wood. Last night the temperature was 24 degrees here and it isn't a whole lot warmer right now. So um, got my gloves on, ready to go. I know it looks nice. It is really nice out here, but it is chilly. So here we go. Okay, all cut out. Next step is to put it together. Okay, I have the plywood cut out and I cut it in half for two reasons. Number one, uh, I couldn't fit the whole piece on my bandsaw. Number two is I have to cut out a piece for the clockworks, which is going to go right in the middle. So I'm just going to mark that and I'm going to cut this piece out and I'm going to give myself enough room so that it all fits in there. And I will cut that on the bass out and then glue it together. Now normally what I do is I will put clamps on each end to hold this together so that um, the pieces of wood don't separate when I'm gluing it together, when I'm putting the plywood on the back. This time I am going to, because there's a nifty little notch here, I'm going to put a screw in there. And then I'm going to clamp this end over here so that this whole thing stays together. So that basically holds it so it doesn't separate when I'm putting the backing on it. And I try to line everything up. So now it's time to put the backing on. And I do that with either wood glue or in this case I'm using some liquid nails. It's a really good bond. I found that nothing comes apart when I use this stuff. Okay, so now I put some tacks in it. Some little brads that I shoot in with a staple gun just to hold that while the glue sets. But I also clamp it. So I'll put some clamps on it like this and 
clamp it down to the from the fish and I put some wood underneath it as well make sure I get pretty good coverage on that <clears throat> I just have to wait till the glue sets and that takes a couple of hours but I will wait probably more like three before I do the next step. All right the glue set ready to go and sand it. I'm going to use my, uh, my belt sander 100 grit sandpaper it's kind of worn because I've been using it for a while and I'll get the edges where I can't go with the bell sander with my uh, orbital sander. chalk paints. Um, I'm going to use a bunch of different colors because that's what I do. This is not this is not fine art. In fact you may see me dip my brush from one color into another. Not wash, wash out the brush. So what I'll do here is I'll paint and then I will wait for it to dry and then I will sand it and I will put a finished coat of wax on it. And the wax will seal the chalk paint and um, make it look real kind of vintage looking. and dried. It's been sitting overnight so everything is good and sturdy and steady like the glue is dry and all that stuff. So I'm going to take my little sander and I'm going to sand it some and distress it a little bit. This is what I use for a template. And what I will do is I will mark the center and I'll drill a hole and then I will put the numbers around. I just use 12, 3, 6, and 9. And then I put some little tacks in between to indicate 1, 2, and the rest of the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. out my numbers and I have my charcoal chalk paint graphite is called so what I did is I shook some so it's in the cap so I have this stipple brush here that I'm going to use to dab the paint on you can't put a whole lot on there there is an art to stippling, so you brush some of it off on a paper towel.
let's take a peek. All right, so my next step is to mark off the numbers in between these and put um, a tack in there. But I have to wait for this to dry a little bit first. All right, now on my clock face, I have marked some holes at different distances from the center so that I know where to put my tacks. And I'm going to mark those using a finishing nail. And I, all I have to do is put it in the right hole, give it a tap, move it around. So now all I have to do is bang these all in and uh, the clock will be ready for distressing. All right, I'm ready to put the finishing touches on the outside of the clock. I am using anti Seagrams wax. I have clear wax and dark wax. The clear wax will go on first and then the dark wax around the edges because I want to leave the center of the clock visible. So I'm not going to darken it too much. So I'm using the same stipple brush that I used for the lettering. This applies the wax really well. And you can mix the wax. Uh, you can do a combination of clear and dark, and you can mix them together if you don't want it as dark. If you don't want it really dark, you put on the clear wax first, and then you put the dark wax over. If you want it dark, you put the dark wax on without the clear wax. So now this final step would be to take a, a rag and wipe the wax down. And you can kind of blend it in as you do this. You don't want to leave any big globs of wax anywhere. this is or where his eye would be but I think it would be right about here so I'll put inside and I'll put a hanger on the back but that's basically the finished look of the clock. <laughs>